Dear students, let us continue with the design of facilities under which we started with the parking facilities. In the previous interactions, we have talked about the need of parking and then we shifted to on street parking. Under on street parking, we have looked at the various ways in which the on street parking can be provided. Now, in this interaction, we are going to talk about on street parking pricing means that is you have to charge some price from the people who are going to park their vehicle on the street. The another thing is which is quite important when you have to provide accessible transportation is the parking is specifically being provided for disabled people. And the next thing which we are going to talk about is the off street parking in those cases where the on street parking is not sufficient enough to handle the demand or is to be removed and all of the parking has to be shifted off the street then what are the ways or provisions in which it can be done. So, let us start with the pricing policies and the type of the pricing which can be there or the methods which can be there. We talked about the classification of methods towards the end of our previous interaction and this is the continuation of the same. The first thing which we can have is the pay and display parking. Now, when we are talking about this type of a parking, one thing which is clear here is that uh, though we are paying for it, but we are paying for the ticket which we are getting from a machine and then this ticket is going to inform that at what particular time for what particular location this ticket has been purchased. So, that is uh, that information which is going to be there and it will also going to tell up to for what particular time this ticket has been purchased. So, here when we are looking at uh, this type of a system, then the time is actually not a constraint in that form and whatever the ticket has been purchased, that ticket has to be placed by the parker on the dashboard of the vehicle. And once it is being placed there, then anybody who is trying to enforce the parking regulation in that area can see that ticket and can identify that for how much time period this vehicle has been placed at that location. So, that enforcement is also possible because of that type of a placement. So, here the flexibility comes in terms of the total parking time and that is how the ticket has been purchased for a particular duration. And this system can be used in any of the environments whether we are talking on the street parking or we are talking off the street parking. The another case is a disc parking. Now, here again we are going to have a disc and that disc as being shown here, this is one type of uh, example or a prototype which can be utilized. Now, this disc is going to tell that for what particular time period the vehicle has been placed in this parking area or parking slot. So, here the parking limit is being set, but the fee is not there for that particular parking being occupied by a vehicle. So, once this uh, disk is being used, the same procedure is going to be followed as we talked previously. Here also, once you show that what time period you are going to utilize, it is being shown in the basis of uh, the movement of this disk. Then this disk is being placed on the vehicle dashboard and the enforcement officer is going to audit the time and is going to see that whether there is a time which is being left or the time which is being used more at this particular location if it is happening then this vehicle needs to be removed from there. So, those type of measures can also be taken up and this system is defined as a revenue control aspect system. The another way is installing of the parking meters. Now, when we are installing these parking meters here the parking time is also there which is being limited in a sense that you can park for 1 hour or 2 hour or so. At the same time, it is going to be chargeable. So, it is a place where the land is costly, where the lot of demand is there and there is a scarcity of the uh, locations where the vehicles can be parked. So, in all of those scenarios, this particular system can be utilized. Now, when we are installing this, then this parking meter is being installed one per parking location. So, that is how it is being placed. And the time limits are already defined because for a particular area we have already on the basis of parking studies 
identified that the vehicle should not be allowed to be parked for say more than one hour. So, that is already being set and that is being set in the meter also. So, the person will come who is having a vehicle and then purchase that time and that particular slot for the parking of a vehicle for that time period and that is how it the system goes on. But if somebody violates that time period, then there is going to be a very high penalty. So, in some of the locations even with the, this uh, pay and display or the coupon system also it is working and it is not in terms of a parking meter, but you purchase a location for parking of your vehicle for a, say 1 hour or 2 hours, but and after that the, if you again purchase for the same location then the escalated cost is going to be charged from the parker. So, you may be paying something like 20 rupees for 2 hours, but if you go for third hour then it may be like 50 rupees you have to pay extra for a 1 hour or a part of that 1 hour. So, that is a, also a manual way of doing it, but in this case because the installation is there, so there is no manual intervention. The only intervention is going to be there in terms of the enforcement people who are moving around and auditing the locations and the vehicles which have been part to see that whether the vehicles are violating the time periods or they are within the time periods. So, here you can see that there is a disk which is being placed at the dashboard of the vehicle. And so, the enforcement person can come and see that what exactly is just showing and accordingly the decision can be taken up. Here in another case the parking meters are being installed at the curb side and the parking meter is going to uh, work for one for this side and one for the other side. So, that is a combination being provided. So, person can come and purchase the ticket and then put the vehicle at that location. Now, another one is a coupon parking. Now, in this coupon parking uh, in the previous cases what is happening is that you come to a location, you purchase a ticket, you per get a disc or you purchase uh, something from a machine. With a so, all of those things are happening, but here what it says that we can have a booklet of the coupons and this booklet of the coupons can be pre-purchased. So, once you have a booklet of 20 coupons, 50 coupons or 100 coupons with you and you are a regular visitor for certain area, then this coupon can be utilized. So, this is a combination of disk parking and pay and display parking. So, in this this particular coupon when you have this is going to have the timings when the vehicle is going to be parked. So, date and timings are going to be there and once it is being written then this coupon is going to be placed on the dashboard of the vehicle. And again the same procedure is going to be followed that means there is going to be an audit by the enforcement persons and uh, the person is going to take a decision based on whether the time is left or time is exceeded and all those things. So, this is used at a space where the time limit is being set. If the time limit is not being set, if there is no issues in any of the area, then it is something like a free parking condition. You can come with your vehicle, park it for a whole day and there is no issue. But now we are not talking of those situations here. What we are talking is in terms of the cases where there are time limits being set. Now, another important thing is that uh, we need to take into consideration the disabled people. Now, when we talk about disabled people, they may be coming in a vehicle as a passenger or they may be driving a vehicle, they are differently abled. So, they can also drive based on the adjustments being done in the vehicle. Now, once they come to a particular parking location, then they should get a place to park their vehicle. And that is the reason we are talking about that accessible parking for these disabled people which is marked. Uh, people can come and park their vehicle, nobody else can park, if somebody else can park then they can be challenged for that. Now, when we are looking at this sort of a situation then what the norms says is that if you have a curbside and there is a building or a development here and it has a the door at this location, then whatever location is being identified for these differently abled people, this distance between these two as far as possible should not be more than 30 meters. So, that they need not to walk for a longer distance or they need not to search out for such locations away from this location and then it becomes tedious for them. 
Another thing which needs to be looked at is that uh, we are going to provide the markings in terms of the tiles and these tiles are the directional tiles which are going to take the persons like this to the location where they want to go. So, there is a designated way in which these people will be moving either this direction or this direction. So, tactile favor tiles can be there. So, that is another thing needs to be taken care of. Third thing is that we are going to place at this point a sign and that sign shows that this is a location where a parking is being dedicated to a disabled person. So, it means we are going to have a sign like this and this height it shall be 2 meters and based the size is also predefined. We have uh, already looked at these particular signs and the way of the placement etcetera when we talked about the road signs. So, that is uh, another thing which is to be taken care of. Then the size or the dimension of that parking stall in which the vehicle is going to be parked. So, this says that it should be 5 meters by 3.6 meters, 5000 mm to 3600 mm. Now, when we are talking about this, then what it says is that it may be something like this way. So, this is 5 meters and this is 3.6 meters, but it has two parts. So, what are the parts which are there is that this is 2.4 meters and the another one is going to be 1.2 meters. Vehicle is going to be parked here and this is a space which is going to be left open, but not to be utilized for the parking of any vehicle and that is the reason that it is usually being hatched, so that no other thing comes on it. So, this is what it says here. If there is a requirement of a slope, then the slope shall not exceed 1 percent and when the person comes out of here and say the person is on a wheelchair, then the fellow will move in this direction. So, this connectivity is to be taken care of and therefore, whatever type of connectivities we discussed in the case of pedestrian footpaths being connected with the carriageway. So, we are going to have a slope. So, 1 in 15, 1 in 20 slopes that is what we are going to talk there and then the width is also going to be there. So, you have uh, something the flared situations in this form. So, at the back also there is going to be a width w which we have talked that it should be minimum 1.2 meters then this slope is going to be there. So, we said 1 in 15. So, it says we can go to 1 in 20 also, but there is a flare on this side which is 1 in 10. So, those things we are going to we are talking here. So, this size which we are looking here is 1800 mm by 2000 mm which should be there and this side bay which is 1.2 meters wide and 5 meters long. If you require to have a two such parkings dedicated for the disabled, then uh, it is going to be placed here. So, this one is also a parking for the disabled people and the another one is also a parking. So, this is a common area for them, but in some of the cases it may happen that there is a requirement of a pickup or a drop van which is going to come to this area. And in that case, this width is going to be increased to 2.4 meters. Now, the transverse zones are going to be there, which are being provided at the side as well as at the back, and they should have the cross hatch conditions. And if nothing has to be parked there, nothing is allowed to stand there, then we should use yellow color for that. If there is a possibility, then the path should be sheltered so that uh, they have uh, at most comfort while using this parking as well as going to the location or the desired point where they have an activity to be performed. So, whatever we discussed can see here that there is a wheelchair. So, this wheelchair is having a minimum width of like 0.9 meters. So, that is what it is being shown. This is a hatched area which remains open. So, there is a disabled parking one, there is another disabled parking in between that this common place is being provided 
and this is 1.2 meters wide. The parking is 2.4 meters wide on either of the side of it and the length is 5 meters. And this is how the sign is being placed. So, the curb side is there on this curb side it is being placed at a height of 2 meters. In this photograph or a diagram what you can see is that uh, there is a bigger vehicle being parked. So, this is a say pickup van and it occupies the same space that is 2.4 meters, but this hedged area which is being provided this is also 2.4 meters. So, that is a change which is there and apart from having the signs being placed at this location there is a pavement marking which is also being provided here. So, that is the same which you can see here on the street of the street the things have been provided in the same manner. It all depends at how many numbers are required to be provided accordingly other things have been shown there. Now, when you are deciding that how many such parking should be provided then there is this guideline. What it says is that up to 50 at least one has to be there. If there is a requirement in that area on the basis of the various studies then we can go ahead and have more than this also, but this is a minimum required value which should be there. And even up to 400 it says that at a rate of 1 is to 50 we should provide these parking spaces. That means, if uh, there are 400 spaces then out of those 400 spaces 8 should be marked for disabled people. And at, at the rate of 1 in 100 it is going to be above 400. That means, now if you have 500 spaces. So, up to 400 we have 8 and then after that for 100 spaces or part of that it is 1. So, we will be having 8 plus 1 9 for 500. Similarly, you have the calculations for other numbers whatever you have identified as a parking supply. Now, let us start discussing about the off street parking. Now, off street parking they are usually at a distance away from the activity areas because you need to have a lot of a space where these vehicles can come and park. So, this is one limitation of a street parking and that is why in many of the cases the parkers may not like to go to off a street parking and will try and will insist to park on the street. But then on the basis of the traffic volume, on the basis of the demand, on the basis of the various activities which are there in a particular area the decisions needs to be taken and if it is being finalized to go ahead with the off street parking then that has to be ensured. Now, these parking spaces which are provided it can be owned by public agency or it can be owned by a private agency any of the agency can own these type of things. But when we are looking at these facilities specifically these are the requirements in the urban area and in urban area the land cost is quite high at the same time the availability of land in the already built up area is less. So, the land is one big issue we need to identify such locations at the same time we have to identify whether we should construct it or not it is going to be beneficial in terms of the revenues being earned by using that uh, parking of the street or otherwise developing it in some other form and getting revenues out of it in more values that is these all type of trade offs needs to be looked at. So, the persons who are coming with their vehicles on these parking spaces there are options available depending on the way that it is being managed. One way is that the person comes with the vehicle searches for a location park the vehicle and goes away and they will get a ticket that they have parked the vehicle there and whatever the amount is to be paid is to be paid to those uh, agencies. The another way is that there is an assisted system an assisted system person comes with the vehicle hand overs the vehicle at the gate of that parking area. The employees of that agency which is managing the parking area receives the vehicle, takes the vehicle, places in location and when you come back to get your vehicle then they deliver it back to you at the gate itself and the payment is being done. So, that is the another way of doing it. But when we are looking at these off street parking spaces there are different things which needs to be taken into consideration. So, the spaces which are going to be provided. The very first thing is that what is the circulation space which is available, how much we can provide. We have looked at the various ways of doing it. 
that uh, in the case of on street parking, we had talked about the bay and then we said there is going to be a circulation space at the back of the vehicles which are being parked and it can be one side parking, it can be two side parking and then accordingly the width of that circulation space was changing. So, it was something like 3.6 meters and as high as 6.6 meters depending on the angle of parking as well as uh, the movements which are there one way or two way movements. So, the circulation space is one important thing, whatever vehicles have been parked in this form. So, you need some space at the back of it and then after that only there can be another set of vehicles which can be parked. Then minimization of the dead spaces especially at corners. Now, if I have this as a, this type of a, a orientation of the parking space and then I keep parking these vehicles like this, then I can park the vehicles in this form. Now, no vehicle can be parked here. So, this is a dead space. Now, this dead space has to be minimized by way of the parking pattern or the design which we are going to create in this area. Safety of users is also to be looked at because when these vehicles come gets in or comes out of the parking area, if the two start doing it together, then this becomes a conflict point. At the same time, there is a entry or exit from here. So, whoever the parkers are there, they are going to walk down to this direction or to this direction. So, we need to have a segregation between the movement of vehicles as well as the parkers or the passengers who are coming in and out of this area. So, that safety is to be ensured. Then ownership can be as I said previously, yours can be private or public. Now, access location to parking lot is another thing. So, from where we are going to have it? So, side road is uh, the thing which we are trying to look at. So, in this case say this is the overall area in which the vehicles are going to be parked. This is the main route. Now, how should we provide the access to this area? If we are going to provide access to this area from the main road, then it means there is going to be a queuing here as well as at this point. So, this whole area is going to be choked out and this will create a problem to the vehicles which are moving on the main road. So, this should not be done. There can be a road on the side and this can be utilized. So, we can provide an access like an entry or exit from this side road and if anything happens on this road because there is not much of traffic on this, then there is no issue, we can utilize that. So, this is another important issue with respect to the off street parking which needs to be taken care of and that is what I have already talked about. Now, when we are saying that this type of a parking as a distance, then the walking is going to be there. So, how much walking is going there that is what also needs to be looked at. The spaces can be demarked by the vehicle type. We need to look at the service time, how much time it takes to take a vehicle in or how much time it takes to vehicle out of that particular area and there are different actions which are going on inside. You are accepting the vehicle, placing the vehicle, delivering it making the pavements all those things. Manpower requirement is also an issue and safety and security. If any vehicle is being parked there, it should remain safe. Any passengers, any drivers are moving in that area and it is a big area, then their security is also to be looked at. In this uh, table, what is being shown is that uh, you have different angles of parking. There are different vehicles. There are possibilities of the type of movements, one way movement or two way movement. Now, for different categories of vehicles, they are defining the size of the area in which one vehicle can be parked. Say for two wheeler, it can be 1000 to 2000 by 2000 uh, mm. So, it is we are talking like this or we are talking like this depending on the size of the vehicles. If in the case of car, 2500 by 5000. In the case of low floor buses, it is 3500 by 14000. In the case of three wheelers, it is like 1500 by 3000. And in the case of trucks, it is 3750 by 7500. So, this is the size of the one parking stall in which one vehicle is going to be parked. 
Apart from this, there is going to be a circulation space. And when we are looking at this circulation space, again this is also related with the vehicle size and its maneuverability in terms of turning radius etcetera. And what we see is that it is 3000 mm in the case of two wheelers. In the case of three wheelers, it is uh, say changing from 1800 to 3600 depending on the angles, depending on the movements which are there. In the case of cars, if we look, it is 3000 to 6000. In the case of uh, low floor buses, it is 5000 to 12000. If you look at uh, say trucks, then in the case of trucks, it is 4500 to 9000. So, there is a big variation even in the case of the circulation space which needs to be provided alongside at the back of these parking spaces. Now, when we say that uh, we are going to walk to our location where we have a desired activity, then this is going to be dependent on certain factors like the size of the city. Now, if the size of the city is quite a small, it is a say population is something like 1 lakh, 2 lakh or 3 lakhs of people, not much of the expansion is there of the city, then people may not be interested to walk a lot. So, they will like to park their vehicle as close as possible to the desired location of their activity. But if the size of the city is big, it is a something like you talk about Mangalore or you talk about Mumbai or Delhi, there the acceptability is going to be higher. Similarly, the type of an activity, if you are involved in an activity which is going to take a whole of the day, then probably the person is more in, interested to go for an office trade. But if it is an activity, say you are going to a bank you have to simply take some money out of an ATM. It may hardly take 5 uh, minutes, not more than that. And for that, if you have to walk 10 minutes or 5 minutes, you are not going to have that acceptability for this type of a office street parking. So, type of activity also makes a difference. Similarly, land uses. I have already correlated it with the type of an activity. So, that is the way we can look at and duration also I have said that if you are going to park for a longer period of time, then the acceptability of these locations are more and therefore, people may be inclined to walk a little bit more as compared to the rest of the conditions. So, here the information which is being given is that what is the population size with respect to population size for different purposes with which a person is coming to an area and parking a vehicle, the distance is being defined in feet. And what we can see is that it is uh, increasing with the increase in the population, though at this level we observe that there is a sort of a saturated value and uh, we can assume that roughly around 550 meters is the distance which is acceptable to the people who are coming for shopping even in the big cities. Because when they go back then they have lot of things in hand. And the similarly in businesses, it is going up to 590. When you look at work, then again this is getting more or less saturated at this point. But in rest of the things, we are again going to 500. So, if we have this population segment of 5 lakhs to 10 lakhs, then we can pro assume that 500 meters is going to be an acceptable value for uh, different reasons or different purposes of the trip. Now, one study was done in Kota, Rajasthan. And there the acceptable walking distance was looked in the mixed uh, type of an area where lot of different type of activities were there and it was found that for cars the distance was 210 to 260 meters as acceptable to those parkers whereas in the case of motorized two wheelers it was lower than that. So, it means the, the type of the vehicle or the parkers that is also going to make a difference here. So, now we can uh, look at the off street parkings. And in the case of off street parkings, there are different type of parkings which can be there. So, surface parking, underground parking, multi-story, rooftop and uh, the mechanical parking is there. So, we are going to talk about these also one by one. And when we look at the surface parking lot, then in the case of surface parking lot, of course, this is at the ground level. They are somewhere at a distance from the activity area. But then we need to look at the systematic entry and exit to this area from the main road or from the side road. The area needs to be marked for different type of vehicles within that. Circulation area has to be taken care of. So, all of the points which we have discussed previously, they are going to be valid here too. So, 
uh, I am not stressing all of those things again and again here. Safety provisions has to be taken care of and they can be developed on a public or a private land. Now, when we say private land, then it means we are trying to induce that if somebody has a, a vacant land available, then we can say, okay, you can get certain sort of a subsidy if you allow to use your land for the parking of vehicles and even the person can earn out of it based on the parking fee being charged in that area. So, uh, that is the possibility which need to be looked at and that is where we can say that it, these things can be utilized as a tool for employment generation. Now, designs has to be such that the dead spaces are as low as possible. I have shown you that how the dead spaces may occur. So, let us look at uh, the things here what you found in this one this is a, a sort of a perpendicular parking. So, all the vehicles are facing each other and then there are circulation spaces being defined and they are also being defined whether the vehicles can move in one direction or the vehicles can move in both the directions. So, this is one big area where lot many spaces are being provided it is totally at a ground level. So, it is a surface parking lot and the another one if you look at what they have done is that in most of the cases if the angled parking is there then the vehicles are going to be parked in this form. So, there is going to be some dead space here or some space here. This is being omitted by way of the arrangement as being shown in this one. So, we are having optimal utilization of the available space here. So, we can see here also that there is lot of uh, dead space here this is a dead space or there is a dead space here. So, these spaces needs to be removed as far as possible if it is not possible then that is another issue, but you need to look at that what are the various orientations, what are the various patterns in which the vehicles can come in this and can be parked. Now, uh, this is an underground parking, so underground parking can be in the basement, they can be a single level parking, they can be again a two level parking or three level depending on what is the size of the building at the top of it. So, usually they are going to be provided near the multi-story buildings or the city centers, playground parks, public buildings etcetera because there is lot of activity in that area and therefore, the demand is also there. But when you are going below the ground level, so you are going to have something like this that means a retaining wall is required so as to sustain the earth on the sides. So, this retaining wall construction is going to be there all along the periphery of it. So, that is an important thing, but when you are going also downwards then the air circulation or the ventilation has to be looked at. So, and the illumination is also another thing and the third thing is the drainage because you are uh, below the ground level. So, we have to see that how the air circulation can be maintained what amount of illumination needs to be provided and then there should not be a case that the water is getting filled in that area or ponding. So, the design has to be such that the water goes away as early as possible. So, in that direction the illumination level has been defined as the minimum 3 watts per meter square or minimum 50 to 75 flux. Drainage for that the longitude and the lateral drains needs to be provided and the sums are also provided where the water gets accumulated and then it is pumped in and out of the system. Then when you are going down you are coming up the vehicle ramps have to be provided as well as the pedestrian ramps can be there, there can also be stairs, there can be elevators. So, the strategic locations needs to be identified where these things can be provided. Similarly, the fire fighting systems also needs to be placed in location. So, that also needs to be identified. In some cases when the basement is not adequate enough to have the parking then we can go to the upper level, but for that you have to look at the urban land uh, or building laws in that area. The other way is that if we want to increase the capacity then at the same level you can have the mechanical system. So, one vehicle can be at the top of this and another can be here at the ground level. So, this is another way of increasing it. We are going to talk about the various entry exit ramps, width of art, gradient etcetera because they are going to be similar in the case of MLCP 2 and uh, that is what we will be taking up when we we'll talk about MLCP. So, here you can see the amount of illumination being provided, the markings being done, 
the vehicles are being parked, there is a circulation space being provided at the back of the vehicle, so that they get into the area. There are mechanical systems where the vehicles can be at two levels, we are increasing the capacity of that area, so it is getting doubled, but then we require somebody to operate these things, so manual intervention will be required for doing these type of operations. So, we close our interaction now on this and we will be continuing discussing about these office street parking facilities in the next interaction too. Till then, thank you and bye.